Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. My name is Sva and my goal is to become your go-to content creator when it comes to Tibia and bring you some awesome and useful content for this lovely game. And in today's video we are going to talk about a heavily requested topic, the hotkeys. As an EK main I focus on EKs and I often hear a lot of new EKs saying that they face mana issues in their hands. This of course doesn't necessarily mean that your hotkeys are the problem, but for quite a lot of people, it is. I am a strong believer that TBA is a game of habit, meaning that what works for me may not work for you and so on. So instead of just showing you my setup, which I will too, this video will be focused towards explaining the reasoning behind my keybinds and why and when you should consider making changes to your setup. My goal is not to make you copy my setup, but rather having the knowledge to make your own adjustments. I am aware that not all of you guys want or can afford a gaming mouse, so maybe this video is not going to be 100% useful to you guys, but I'm sure that you can get out of it something of value. And of course, if you have any tip, please write it down on the comment section. Please make sure to like the video if you enjoyed this type of content and feel free to hop on my live streams. Link in the description. Anyways, let's get right into the video. So when trying to set up your hotkeys, it is really important to realize how insanely crazy this game can get and how important good hotkey setups are. Even though TBA is an old game, nowadays things can get super hectic really easily. Especially when thing hunting for example. In a single pool you might have to using mana or health potion almost every turn, as well as using a spell or rune from your rotation. Also, you're going to be using a healing spell like Exureiko or Exurabita, depending on your level. Then you need to keep doing this for all the pulls. On top of that, if you are kiting, you need to be able to perform all of these actions while moving. And if you are not kiting, you still need to move from pool to pool where you will need to be able to use potions at the same time to start the box at a decent balance of HP and mana. Furthermore, when a pool gets complicated, you might need to balance the potions you use and maybe start using some ultimate health potions or supreme instead of manas. And if that's not enough and your health keeps going down, you are going to need to use a my ring and an SSA, or if you're a mage or an RP, you need to put mana shield. Of course, all of these actions have to be performed while doing your normal rotation. Also, you can add in there the fact that you will have to loot while hunting, right, to, to maximize the efficiency. As you can see, Tibia needs a lot of hotkeys, and there are a lot of them that if you set them up in a way that you don't have to make your hands travel from one side of the keyboard to the other, will feel super smooth and simple to execute in sequences. What I actually recommend is looking at how you put your hands on the keyboard. I personally play with chat off, which means that I use WASD to move. I know this will throw a lot of you guys off because you're used to use the arrow keys, but I really think this is a better way of playing. The main reason I use WASD is because it allows me to have a lot of hotkeys near my movement hand, which is the left hand for me, and allows me to have my right hand at all times on my mouse. So no matter what happens, I will always have my right hand on the mouse and my left hand on the keyboard. I also have a gaming mouse with 12 buttons on the side, so yeah, you can now understand how many actions I am able to perform simultaneously. As I said before, using WASD will enable a ton of hotkeys for you. I can now press comfortably like 15 keys with my left hand, but there's more. I can use them with modifier keys too, like Shift, Alt or Control. So it would make a total of up to 60 new keybinds just by swapping to WASD. Alright, dividing your hands in your setup is the first step, but how? What should go in the left hand and what should go in the right hand? Well, to help you decide that, ask yourself this simple question. Do I need to use it while moving? If the answer is yes, that action will go instantly to your right hand. So for example, me as an EK, I kite a lot when luring the mobs to my box. So in order to kite efficiently, I need to be able to move my character, which again, I do it with my left hand, and also I need to use spells or a rune. 
That's why all my rotation is in my mouse, which is my right hand. This way I can move comfortably while using Exori or Exori Mass. I don't have to move my hands at all for that and everything will go smooth as silk. If the answer to the question is no, that action will go to the keyboard in my left hand. It can get a little complicated if the answer is yes but. In the yes but category, I'll put um, all the actions that if needed should be able to be performed while moving, but are not commonly used. An example of this is a might ring or an SSA, at least for EKs while hunting, it is really really strange to have to use them as you move. That being said, there are times that you are going to need to do it regardless. So what's my point here? Well, you don't really want to waste your mouse real estate in this kind of actions because compared to your rotation, they are barely used. But you want to be able to use them smoothly while moving. So what I end up doing for these cases is using a hotkey that is really close to my movement keys. This way I can press them while moving, barely moving my fingers from my movement keys. Following my example, I have my SSA on 1 and my my ring on 2. As you can see, if I have to lift my fingers from my movement keys, I can do it really quickly and will barely affect my movement performance. Alright, you are now starting to think about your hotkeys and how to divide them and organize them on both hands, but you are starting to realize that you need to use three or four actions at the same time. But the problem is that we only have two hands, hopefully. <laughs> this is where finger distribution comes into play. When distributing your hotkeys, you have to actually think about how are you going to position your hands. Let me give you a more detailed example. As a knight, I have to perform the following actions at the same time. I need to use a mana or health potion. I need to use an attack spell from my rotation. I need to use a support spell from rotation, like Exeteres, Ampress or Utito. I have to right click to change target or shift right click to loot. And also I need to use an Exura Medico. How do I manage to do all these things simultaneously? Well, let me break it down for you. For the attack spell, I use the thumb of my right hand. Since I have a gaming mouse, I have all my rotation in my mouse, right? For the support spells, I use either my thumb from my right hand, since it is really close to my rotation, or I use my keyboard depending on the spell I'm using right now. For right clicking, I obviously use the middle finger of my right hand. For Exura Medico, I use the thumb of my left hand because I have my Medico on spacebar. This way I can use it while moving and while performing my combo. And this leaves us with the last and most important part of the video. How do I pot myself? Well, I do have three keybinds for potions. Supreme Heal Potions, Ultimate and Strong Mana Potions. Supreme Health Potion is in my right mouse thumb. I know this breaks the rule of using different fingers for simultaneous actions, since I'm using the same hotkeys for potions than for the rotation, but as I said in the beginning of the video, what works for me may not work for you, right? For me, having it like this has me in tough situations. If I spam supreme potions, it usually means that I'm dying and probably about to start panicking. So having it this way allows me to minimize the errors I do while panicking. Normally, you should be doing supreme supreme spell, supreme supreme spell, right? Well, by putting it like this, in case I panic, I default to do supreme spell, supreme spell, which Yes, of course, it is not the optimal way, but it's way better than not using any spell at all. Because you're just panicking and, and you don't know what to do, right? And for the other potions, I use my mouse wheel. When I scroll up, I use my ultimate health potions, and when I scroll down, I use my mana potion. I scroll with my index finger, which I barely use at all. So this way, I am able to, in a single turn, do 5 actions at the same time. Sadly, my mouse's software doesn't allow me to bind any actions to my will, so I have to use a third-party uh, software called AutoHotkey. This program is insanely customizable and you can do a lot of illegal things with it, such as auto-loot, auto-heal, auto-rotation, but of course we are going to use it legally, so there's no problem with it. To know if what you're about to do is legal or not, just follow this simple rule. 
one key, one action. This means that if you make a script for auto hotkey that presses F5 key and F6 key in a sequence and you do it with the press of a single key, this is an illegal script and you may get deleted for this. If you instead do like I do, if I scroll up, I press one key and if I scroll down, I press another key, that's completely legal, don't worry. So just in case you want to use auto hotkey with the wheel script, this is the script you want to use. You just need to change the hotkeys that it is in uh, the brackets. 41, you have your potions assigned to. As you can see, this is a really basic script that will use F11 whenever you scroll up and F10 whenever you scroll down. To make auto hotkey work, you need to install it first, of course, then create an auto hotkey script. Just open an empty document and paste the code, then save it with the extension .ahk. Okay, sorry, English is hard. Then double click the script. You will now see that the script is up and running. To close the script, just right click the icon and exit. And of course, binding something to your will will overwrite your scroll functionality in Tibia. So you will need to hold shift to be able to scroll through your backpacks while this script is active. All right, we are almost done. Let's talk a little bit about the hotkey distribution. Now you know what to put in which hand, but you are not sure about what key specifically to use for your actions, right? Well, I really think this comes down to preference, but I'll give you a few tips I follow when organizing mine. Number one, I personally follow this rule. Keep it the same for all games. So let's say you come from World of Warcraft and you were playing a Paladin. Yikes! You had your stun binded on letter T. Well, then use that key for something similar. In Tibia, there is yet no stuns, but there are things that can hinder movement such as a magic wall or a paralyzed rune. Adding to this rule, try to divide the hotkeys in classes for a lack of better words. What I mean by classes is, you know, Exori, Exori Gran and Exori Mas are attack spells and Utani Ur and Exetares are support spells. So having your Utani Hur next to your Exori Gran isn't really logical, right? So what I suggest is dividing your hotkeys according to its class or type. Support spells will go somewhat together, then separated we have all the attack spells, then we have all the equip hotkeys, etc, etc. Also, when setting up your hotkeys, be careful about using modifiers such as Alt, Shift or Control. Keep in mind that if you bind an action that requires you to move while performing it to a hotkey with modifier, you are most likely going to stop moving because you are holding down that modifier, right? So try to put stuff like bombs, amulets or rings in these uh, modifiers, right? Following the topic of a modifier, when setting up your hotkeys, think about the frequency in which you are going to be hitting that key. If it is a key that you will press often, make sure to not use any modifiers. Generally speaking, having to press a modifier is harder than not using it. Also, keep in mind that the hotkey you choose must be easy to press, right? For example, it wouldn't really make sense to have an energy wall rune binding to your spacebar, right? You would be using a really accessible hotkey with an action that is barely used. But if in my example you are perma spamming medico, then it makes sense to bind it to the spacebar. You can group similar actions to the same hotkey with modifiers. This is actually a tip that my RP friend Jerry gave to me. He has a panic button. The panic button has one cake in the key itself, the other cake in shift plus that same key, an avatar in control plus that same key. This way, if you're panicking, you just need to remember to press that hotkey. Of course, in an ideal world, you want to press the correct action, but having a panic hotkey will give you a 100% chance of using something valuable for high stress situation, right? More or less in the same topic, I have set several runes and amulet. For example, I use regular key for the amulet I'm going to use in a hand, then a more protective amulet on shift, and then the most protective amulet on control. So for example, I'll have a slip shawl on V, a terra amulet on shift V, and guild necklace on control V. 
Also, if you decide to change your hotkeys, I would recommend to take it easy. If you change a lot of hotkeys at the same time, while more effective, it can also make you feel super weird and frustrated, so keep that in mind and take your time making the changes. What is important is that you stick with the changes if you think it is for the better, even if it feels weird at first. And the final tip I want to give you is that all of these rules must not be followed to the T. Even I, that I am proposing them, don't follow them entirely. For example, remember the rule about separating your hotkeys in classes? Well, most of the keys are doing that, but for my rotation, since XRS is part of my rotation, even though it is not an offensive spell, I have it binded close to my damage rotation just because it makes sense for me, right? So don't be super strict and just use this video as a guide on how you can improve your setting. In this image, you can see how I organize my hotkeys. I will let a link in the description to download it if you want to. Alright guys, this was all for today's video. I hope the video was helpful and if you have any suggestions and any tips on how to organize better your hotkeys and want to share them with the community, please do so in the comment section. Also, if you want to suggest any video, you can do so. I'm always listening to new ideas to bring you guys some cool content. Anyways, that was all from me for today. I hope you guys liked the content. And if you did, please make sure to help me out with the algorithm and share it with your friends. Give it a like and comment, even if it is to say that you like dogs. That stuff really helps the channel. Be safe, take care, and as always, sit up straight, drink water, and I'll see you in the next one.